Well, it's December 23rd, and we're carrying on with our Advent devotions, following these Jesse tree signs and symbols leading up to the birth of Jesus, taking us all away from the beginning till already now we're just a few days away from celebrating our Savior's birth. Yesterday, uh, we talked about Mary and her faith. The day before that, we heard the angel and, and God's gracious merciful, loving message for Mary and for all of us. And today, uh, we're going to talk about Joseph. Before we get to that, though, we've got our Jesse Tree picture for today. It's drawn for us by Olivia. And Olivia has drawn for us here a hammer. You can see the head of the hammer here. This, I guess, is the handle. Uh, and a, a very nice picture of a hammer drawn for us by Olivia. Nice blue and gray and a little bit of brown here, too. Good job, Olivia. Thank you for the picture of a hammer. Well, our, our picture is a hammer because the Bible tells us, well, one of the few things that the Bible does tell us about Joseph, it doesn't give us a lot of information about Joseph, but what it does tell us is that he was a carpenter. So uh, a hammer would seem to be a fitting tool, a fitting image uh, to represent Joseph, the, the tool he probably worked with more than any other. So uh, that's why we have that as our picture for today. Our, our Bible reading that the devotion book encourages you to do today is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. And this doesn't happen very often as we've worked our way through all of this, but we're actually going to read the whole thing right here, starting with verse 18, all the way down at the bottom here to verse 25. We'll read the whole thing together here now. So let's just jump straight into it. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, before they were married, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Now that, of course, is what we read about yesterday. Matthew here he doesn't really give you much of the details about Mary. He tells the story from the perspective of Joseph. So we'll pick up the story there with how Joseph responds to this news that his betrothed, the woman to whom he is going to be married but has not yet been married to, how he responds to the news that she is with child. It's obviously a difficult situation for everybody here. And her husband, notice it calls them husband and wife, but we just found out that they're betrothed. So in one sense, for all intents and purposes, they are husband and wife already. Their idea of betrothal is more than what we normally think of with an engagement or something like that. But but they, as it said right here, uh, before they came together, they, they, they haven't really been married yet. Okay? And so her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame... He has the right to put her to shame based on what has happened, you know, what people would suspect had gone on to, be, to, to uh, cause this pregnancy to be. He has the result, to, to, or he has the, the, the option to, to tell everyone, and the result of that would be that Mary would be put to shame, possibly even put to death, in all honesty, for what's going on here. But Joseph doesn't want to do that. He's a just man. He's unwilling to put her to shame, so he resolved to divorce her quietly. He's going to call off the marriage, but he's not going to make a big fuss out of this and get Mary in a lot of trouble. But as he was considering these things, thinking about what he was going to do, behold, an angel of the Lord. So we've talked about angels a few times already. Here's another one. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. So that's a little different than what happened with Mary. The angel didn't come to Mary in a dream, but for, for Joseph, it's in a dream. And the angel says, Joseph... Son of David. Now that's that's important, right? That's important because we heard those promises to David and all the Old Testament folk. Whoever the Savior is going to be has to come from David's family. So we're told emphatically here that Joseph is a son of David. Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Just like the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid. He says it here again. Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, the reason the name is J Jesus is that's what Jesus means. It means he, he saves. The Lord saves. That's what Jesus means. 
for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now the prophet here is Isaiah, who said these words. God spoke these words through Isaiah. And this is in Isaiah chapter 7, is where we'll find, where you can find this in the Old Testament. That's not one of the promises that we looked at on, have looked at on our way through all of this so far, but there it is. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Literally, that's what the word Emmanuel means. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, he took his wife but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. It's this, this one little word right here that I want us to take just a minute to focus on here now. So if you remember, a couple of days ago we talked about God's grace. How God graciously chose Mary. Right, The angel came to Mary and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. And favor, that's what grace means, God's favor. So God chose Mary by grace. Then yesterday we talked about Mary's faith. Let it be to me according to your word, is what she said to the Lord. So she's chosen by grace, and she believes in that grace by faith. And this is what we confess about our whole faith, that we are, we are saved by God's grace through faith, and we say apart from works of the law, apart from what we do. However, there is a place in our faith for works. And I think we can see it from Joseph here. So we're saved by grace through faith. This is our salvation. But look look at what Joseph did. Look at what Joseph does here, literally. So he gets this word from God that says that this, this child is the one who's going to save his people from their sins. And it says, when he woke from sleep, he did. So really, we're talking about works there. He he believed God's promise according to God's grace. And the result was he did works. He did, a, he did good things, right? He, he, he did as the angel commanded him. He took Mary as his wife. He didn't divorce her, even quietly or anything like that. He took Mary as his wife and followed the instructions and called his name Jesus. So Joseph, just like the rest of us, is saved by God's grace through faith, apart from works of the law. But this this gracious saving of God that we receive through faith, it flows out into works. And Joseph does what was commanded of him by God. So Joseph then, just like Mary yesterday, is an example for us. As we get ready to celebrate the birth of our Savior, we rejoice that we're saved by grace through faith, apart from works of the law, but we also rejoice that God's good news for us makes us eager and zealous to do good works.